In John 6, verse 28 says, Then said they unto him, What shall we do, that we might work the works of God? In verse 29, Jesus answered and said unto them, This is the work of God, that you believe on him whom he has sent. And again, in John 5, verse 24, the Lord says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that hears my word and believes on him that sent me has everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but it is passed from death unto life. And another verse here, this is John 6, verse 40. And this is the will of him that sent me, that everyone which sees the Son and believes in him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. So what is the Lord talking about? He's talking about belief. This is what the Lord is asking that we do. It is our works to believe. Yes, this is how he describes it. To believe is our responsibility, is our step. We're not pushed to believe. We are asked, invited, called, and then we decide with our own free will to believe. In other words, it is a step we take when we hear the Word of God. However, like in my case, I did not hear the Word of God. I just was told this is the Word of God, referring to the Bible, and I believed that it was the Word of God before I read it before I heard it, I completely agree and knew this was the Word of God. In other words, I believed in the Word of God. So in John 1.1, 1, 1, we know the Gospel says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The moment that we believe in the Word of God, then we believe in Jesus Christ because in John 1 14 it says and the word was made flesh and dwelt amongst us and we beheld his glory the glory as of the only begotten of the father full of grace and of truth so the first step to salvation is to believe but to believe in what is to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ but the Lord Jesus Christ can be many things to many people. Jehovah Witnesses believe in the Lord Jesus. So do Catholics. So do Mormons. Even Muslims believe in Jesus. The Word of God is the Lord Jesus. In fact, we can see it from 1 John 5, verse 7, if you have a King James Version. It says, there are three that bear record in heaven. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. Believe is believe in the Word of God, who is the Lord Jesus, Christ of Nazareth. Not simply the name of Jesus. We can call this first step faith. And this is faith in the true Christ, the Bible, the Word of God. Not another book, not a book that goes along with it, not a second book, not a third book, not a fourth book. The one book, 66 books, King James Version, I would recommend. And believing that, that is to fully agree with what this word is going to say, even prior to us reading it. That full commitment, understanding faith, that whatever this word will say, we will agree with, is the belief that the Lord is talking about. Which takes us to the second point which is one and the same, but yet we can see it could be slight differences. Because in Romans 10, verse 8 through 11, but certainly verse 9, here's what we hear. Romans 10, verse 9 says, If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Well, then we heard and learned the first step is to believe this is what the lord jesus told us but the second step is to confess with your mouth the lord jesus 
But when we look at the Greek text, we realize that confess is not simply saying, but is the word homologeo, which means to fully agree with, to be in full agreement with, thus confessing as a form of fully agreeing with who? The Lord Jesus, who we just said, is the Word of God. Not by my definition, but by what the Word of God tells us. Now we understand that confessing means to fully agree with the Word of God that is the Lord Jesus and believe that in our heart. In other words, to be in full obedience. Because how could we fully agree with something and disobey that? In fact, we read in the book of Amos, chapter 3, verse 3, can two walk together except they be agreed? This simply means that we can't walk with the Lord Jesus unless we fully agree with him. Otherwise, he would be going one way, he would be going another way. It's like saying, do we agree to go to a pizzeria with a friend? And we agree to that, but we show up at the Chinese restaurant. We haven't fully agreed. We spoke with our lips something which we didn't agree to. What's the same thing here? We have to fully agree with the Word of God, who is the Lord Jesus, in order to really believe. Now, when we look at the Hebrew verb behind the Amos 3.3 verse, look at the meaning. He means to agree, but he also means to get engaged. This is the bride of Christ. It's confirming what we learn in Romans 10. The Lord marries the church. The two fully agreed. They are in a covenant. This means that they're going in the same direction. Well, following the leader who is the head, Christ, the church follows. That's why the wife submits to the husband. The church submits to Christ. The church doesn't say where Christ should go. The church follows where Christ, the good shepherd, leads the church. It is at this moment that we step into the third stage. This is when we receive the Holy Spirit. Now, for some people, this might be a one-step process. They fully agree. They believe. They see the word. They believe. They fully agree with. They're committing and being in obedience. And therefore, they receive the Holy Spirit. So let's go to John 4, verse 10. Jesus answered and said unto her, that is the Samaritan woman, If thou knowest the gift of God, and who is that says to you, Give me to drink, thou wouldest have asked of him, and he would have given you living water. This is exactly how the Lord explained to me salvation. When he asked him, Lord, show me your word. How do I know about salvation? Will you teach that? And he said, go to John 4, verse 10. I was confused at first, but when you read the verse again, look, it says, if you knewest the gift of God. It's a gift of God. Where do we see this also? That's in Ephesians 2, verse 8. Ephesians 2, verse 8 says, for by grace you're saved through faith. That's the belief part. And then not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, exactly like John 4.10. So look at what he says in John 4.10. He says, it is a gift of God. You need to know who is that you're asking. You need to know the Lord Jesus. You need to have the understanding, the faith in the Lord Jesus. That's the first step we talked about. Then you need to ask. As you ask, then you receive the living water. But now, how do we know what is the living water? Well, we have to go to John 7, verse 38. And the Lord says, He that believes on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living waters. But verse 39 tells us what the living water is. But this spake ye of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given because that Jesus was not yet glorified. This is completely mind-blowing. The Lord is spelling it out for us. It is a gift of God. It is given to those who believe. It is the Holy Spirit. It is living water that flows out of you. 
You don't have the living water. It's a living water that flows out of you when you ask to the one you believe in. This is really incredible. You need the living water, which is the Holy Spirit, to be saved. That is the gift of God. Now it flows out of your belly. So if it's not in you, it's not living water in your belly. The Holy Spirit has to be in you. And this is what the Lord means by being born again. For anyone who believes the Holy Spirit is a spirit or an entity outside and not inside of you, you're not saved. Salvation is a gift of God in form of the Holy Spirit, which we receive when we believe, enters through us, and now we have a flow of living water coming through and from us. This is the fourth step. At this point, the new man is generated only through the work of the Holy Spirit. It can't just be born through the first step, which is to believe. It's correct. Some people will go through this instantaneously, but there are separate steps you need to understand. Because unless you obey, meaning you fully agree with, homologeo, Romans 10, 9, you have not believed. Therefore, the living water cannot come into you because you're not believing. This is given to those who believe. Well, then if you have believed, which means you fully agree with, then thus confessing the Lord Jesus, the living water is in you, which is the Holy Spirit. Now it's flowing through you, bearing fruits, which means washing you as well and is creating, has created a new man inside of you. This new man, we read it in 2 Corinthians 5, verse 17, says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, be in Christ, this is the abide that we learn in John 15. He is a new creature. creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. It's a regeneration, a washing in the water and the holiness of the Holy Spirit, which is living water. This is what the Lord is teaching us in John 3, 5. Jesus answered to Nicodemus, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. It's talking about the living water. Now, all things in the Spirit have a repercussion in the physical. Therefore, we're commanded to baptize. But ultimately, it's the living water, the Holy Spirit. Water and Spirit, the Holy Spirit, living water, working through us. That gives us that regeneration and creates the new man. So the new man brings complete change. But we read in Ephesians 4.24, And that you put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. This means that the new man is going to bear fruit evidence of righteousness and holiness. If this righteousness and holiness is not there as evidence, how is the new man can be there? How has that change happened if all things have passed away? The Lord himself tells us in Matthew 13, verse 23, But he that receives seed into the good ground, he see that, hear the word, first step, and understands it. It's not just hearing. Many did. Many received the seed. But this one understands it, which also bears fruit and bring it forth, some a hundredfold, some 60, some 30. The Lord is saying hearing is not just enough. In order to fully believe, you have to understand it, which means fully agree with and allow what? The Holy Spirit to teach you. As we learn in John 14, 26, the Holy Spirit will teach you all things. Now you heard it. Now you understand it because you're fully agreeing with, therefore you're in obedience, which means the Holy Spirit is coming into you and then he can teach you. And by teaching you, is going to bear fruit through you. This is what the Lord says, which hold also bears fruit, some hundredfold, some sixty, and some thirty. So in John 15, 5, the Lord says, I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abided in me, and I in him, notice, it's a two-way, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, you cannot do anything. This is not your works. He just said, not do anything. No, you can do some things. It just said you cannot do anything. But you have to show these fruits, which means it's now you're working. It's the Holy Spirit, the living water, working through you. And the only way to get that is through being in complete agreement, fully agreeing with, homologio, Romans 10, 9, with the Word of God. 
from which comes obedience because again you're fully agreeing with so let's see what it says second peter 1 verse 5 and besides this giving all diligence add to your faith virtue and to virtue knowledge and to knowledge temperance and to temperance patience and to patience godliness and to godliness brotherly kindness i don't see a lot of this these days i really don't i see debates attacks coming against your brothers who are you to judge but here it says and to brotherly kindness charity and we'll do a whole lot of teaching on charity which is godly love now verse 8 second peter 1 verse 8 for if the if these things be in you and abound they make you that you shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our lord jesus christ but he that lacks these things is blind and cannot see afar off and has forgotten that he was purged from his old sins and verse 10 tells you wherefore the rather brothers give diligence to make your calling and election sure you know what this means go and study for yourself for if you do these things you shall never fall and therefore we enter into god's rest this is the result of believing believing means to fully agree with homologeo with the word of god if you are disagreeing with the word of god if you think it's a book that is non-scientific or written with strange description language or some visual pictorials to people who could not understand until science or some better version of knowledge came in you're deceived and you have to come back to the truth the word of god is perfect the word of god is the word of god not a book about god every single word letter number has precision now of course today we have a english translation which gives us access to the greek and hebrew and what excuse do we have not to go read a study understanding it especially when john 14 26 tells us that the holy spirit will teach us all things i'm posting here this chart to show you a summary of what we talked about here the most important thing right now is that you fully believe in the word of god that you are saved through your belief through your faith not through your works not through respecting holidays stars moon days calendars not by being watching for dates but rather that you believe and yes we are in the end times the Lord is giving me tremendous revelations, including details of the times ahead. And in fact, several prophecies or prophetic visions, rather, the Lord has given me have come to pass. But for some reason, this seems to be a secondary thing. Instead of looking for all kinds of reasons why we should be staring outside of the sky doing nothing. This is the time. To come back abide in the lord let go of the world and yes there is not such a thing as i was once walking down an aisle and pronounced the word i believe in christ and was saved returning to my life of sin showing no fruits we'll do a separate teaching on ephesians 4 30 where i will explain what sealing truly means i invite everyone to join our zoom calls We've grown exponentially 10 times in one year. It is the place where I go in depth in these details. And I do explain the calendars and everything else the Lord is showing me. Because it can only be shown to people who are willing to stay with patience and understanding to carefully and with discernment expect and wait as the Holy Spirit teaches all of us. For I'm not above anybody else. This is my invitation. The link and the email is right here. You just send an email and you'll be added to the list. Those who cannot attend the Zoom lives get access to the recordings, which you can watch in your own times. But unless you want to spend the time to understand, like the Lord says, 
You can hear the word, but if you're not understanding it, you're not going to bear fruit. I hope this message encouraged, clarified what the Lord expects of us and what truly belief in salvation ultimately is. Not of works, but it is through the evidence of fruits that we know we have fully believed. Yet if we're alive, there is always time. The Lord is faithful, is full of grace and mercy. He saved me and will save anybody. I invite you to go back to him, believe in his word, fully agree with what the word says. Ask the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. Amen.